you will see that Skull and Bones is a fully fledged game. It's a very big game, and we feel that people will really see how vast and complete that game is. It's a really full, triple, quadruple A game that will deliver in the long run. When just a little back, Ubisoft said this. One of the things we saw is that gamers are used to a little bit like DVD having and owning their games. That's the consumer shift that needs to happen. They got comfortable not owning their CD collection or DVD collection. That's a transformation that's been a bit slower to happen in games. As gamers grow comfortable in that aspect, you don't lose your progress. If you resume your game at another time, your progress file is still there. That's not been deleted. You don't lose what you've built in the game or your engagement with the game. So it's about feeling comfortable with not owning your game. Now with that in mind, Ubisoft presents, Ubisoft published, and Ubisoft insert every single studio they have on this planet, made game Skull and Bones, a Ubisoft original. And just like my Yamex originals in the morning on the toilet, boy, does it stink. With such a fanfare or rather self-congratulatory mastication from this company CEO and the PR hype and fan craving for just a new pirate game, this could have been a home run, even if it was basically a copy-paste job from Ask Creed Black Flag. However, this is Ubisoft, and making tedious and bland games with no character is their French EMO. <laughs> but Skull and Bones is even worse than that. So then, to find out why, what and how, come with me and let's take a look at the utter failures that came together, formed one pirate crew and immediately got scurvy before leaving the port. First of the deckhands signaling for problems was the industry problem child, the live service or games as a service model. Despite being a premium $60 game, Ubisoft, like any other customer disrespecting gaming company, is not satisfied with just releasing a product. Taking on microtransactions is a seemingly harmless way to predate on problem spenders and whales, or anyone gullible enough to spend money on, frankly, often far too mediocre skins. So that goes in. And while general public sadly has accepted microtransactions, a contention point still remains. Always online. Yes, that's right. Like all gassy games, no internet connection, no skull and bones, even if you just want to play alone. But come on, there are CFTs and other live service games that exist that people also call good. So what's the failure in having a live service? Ah, well, here we look at the back catalog of Ubisoft games and their MO. Ask Creed 2, 3, Brotherhood, Liberation, Revelations, Far Cry 3, Space Junkies, Rayman Legends, Prince of Persia Forgotten Sands, Splinter Cell Blacklist. All of these games had active servers, but now they're decommissioned, cutting their online access. And you know, that's fine. You can't expect company to support game servers indefinitely. Fine. But the problem is, when a game like, oh, I don't know, let's say The Crew, released in 2014, is only playable with servers being present. No server, no game. Meaning, not just that you can't play it multiplayer, but it's dead, it's bricked, literally. If I sold you a copy of a game on disc, the next month while you were sleeping, I snuck into your house and broke the disc, I would go to jail. In practical terms, that's almost exactly what Games as a Service is. And that's the thing, the same fate lies with every other always online game. Division 1, 2, and definitely now Skull and Bones, and all the other live service games. But Yamix, developers could release server code or update the game to be playable offline at the end. Oh, yes. But tell me, when was the last time a company bothered to do that? Ubisoft, especially. But 10 years for a game is long enough. Is it? Well, now tell me, how many of you still like to play Skyrim or Mario or Pokemon from SNES, NES eras, right? Hell, even games from, you know, the 2000s. Stop being stupid. Don't tow the company line like a cheerleader. Demand better. 
The point is, Ubisoft may support it for a few years, maybe hell, even 10 years, but what then? Do you really trust Ubisoft to have any kind of end-of-life plan in place? Nevertheless, one that would benefit the customer? Alright, enough dancing around the issue. The gameplay is sad. Now, opening up the game felt um, off. Maybe it was the main menu, or maybe the opening tutorial left me thinking, hmm. Mmm, I'm smelling something not right. Still, some folk have commented that the boats act less like boats and more like sliding rectangles greased up like pigs. And boy, do they. You can even call this game Tokyo Boat Drifting. However, that for the most part is okay. You see, you kinda need boats to rotate a bit faster, otherwise getting stuck is far too easy and frustrating. No, the reason gameplay is sad is for everything else that surrounds the sailing feature. Okay, no, now that I think of it, I'm lying. Even sailing is sad. So, boats basically have multiple speed selector switches. At the top end, there's a limited boost speed, which is dependent on your crew's quote-unquote stamina. Um, yeah, no real wind adjustments to catch a breeze, just mindless, casual, friendly, press forward to go forward, and you do. Then compound the gameplay with bland material gathering that is nothing more than just sailing up to a floating thing and pressing one button, and Job done! It's now in your inventory. Yay, pirate looter shooter. But the worst of all. No, right. This isn't what we're supposed to be after. Not questioning your orders, Captain. Your orders, Captain. What? That's how. That's how gathering will work. I'm lost for words. Mobile mini. Am I going insane and thinking that this is this is just unacceptable, stupid, and lazy? Uh, you want to see something really funny, right? That's a mini game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a mini game. But if you don't feel like doing it, uh, give me a moment. Uh, auto harvest, I think, uh, that would do the trick. Yep, auto the disables timing gameplay associated with harvesting resources. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why is that a feature? And sure, you could claim that Skull and Bones is more casual game with casual, less complex game mechanics. A simplified approach to doing things. Okay. Fine. Gathering loot and materials is secondary then to boating life. And also, yeah, this is why you can't land anywhere you want and explore these islands. Okay, I could understand that if the focus was on having good boat mechanics and gameplay. Well, shooting cannons is simplified too. There is no clue selection other than just installing a cannon and you get free people to man it immediately. Hell, there is not even any swimming in a game about boating and let oh oh no <laughs> there's an invisible wall and when it comes to boarding another ship you know the exciting melee of pirate life bonus loot I, I've, I've seen this clip, but it doesn't make any less bad. Fucking Christ. How bare minimum is this game? Okay, so if Skull and Bones is not focusing on your pirate, swashbuckling and musket shooting as you plunder a ship with, you know, that character, and the boating mechanics and even the combat for them is simplified to a level that it feels like an intern threw it together in an asset flip style, what the hell is the focus and draw of this game? And don't you fucking dare to tell me that it's a fucking grind! 
However, once you start sailing, everything is done through your ship. The third person camera as a whole ship is visible, not the first person which is far more inferior, unless of course you want to switch with it. Anyways, the point is, the focus is that you are not the pirate, you are the ship that does the things, because every other action happens from its perspective. So then tell me, game, is it your pirate or the ship that is the real character? I sure as hell can't tell. Conversely, Ellie Dangerous, No Man's Sky, Star Citizen, and of course, Ascrete, Black Flag, and Sea of Thieves uses one consistent perspective, and rarely ever does it change the viewpoint. You know, to keep up the same tone and certainly have that consistency. Ultimately, Skull and Bones utterly fails to deliver both coherent gameplay with fun mechanics, opting for shortcuts or <laughs> worse, lazy mini games that you can even turn off. So I'm constantly asking myself, what the hell is the point or focus of the game even? <laughs> Okie dokie, so the gameplay utterly fails and feels like an asset flip. Okay, at least the game looks cool and has that pirate aesthetic, uh, you know, the grim dark what else, uh, and yeah, uh, but no. <laughs> See, on the lowest graphics settings, for example, the textures are so far compressed that I haven't seen them being this bad since the 90s. Jesus Christ, those fing- there, there are no fingernails, those are sausages! Jesus. However, on the max settings, the game looks a little bit better, but still worse than Ubisoft's own Black Flag from 10 years ago. Especially if you look past those small walkable areas with your pirate. Yet there is one and only one thing I will praise. Ubisoft games usually have very nice mocap animations. My retirement! <laughs> Proper pirate, I see. Oh, you need a keen eye for prizes. <laughs> Find your own way to St. Anne, chum sniffer. Oh, God damn it! Well, I guess forget about that praise then. Though I do have to remark that even this low amount of uh, voice acting, uh, animations, and I guess writing, and of course scene making with camera positions and so on and so forth, is far more superior than whatever Starfield had. I'm just done finishing the hypercritical review on it and it just pissed me off how bad it is having it- Anyways, hey Bethesda, are you listening? Oh, and it's funny that I mentioned Starfield. Now, you see, Ubisoft is known for their seamless open worlds, you know, Assassin's Creed and all the other blah, blah, blah. Anyways, sure, they're plastered with crappy collectibles, but at least everything is technically impressive. You know, assets streamed everywhere, you can open doors and get inside the rooms and blah, 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 with no loading screens, except for fast traveling, which, um, anyways. Now, in Skull and Bones, this masterful quadruple A, and typical Ubisoft press the holds. Okay. And rather than this, oh my fucking god! Right. Can anyone in the chats notice what was the problem just there? Armstrong moment. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. We still haven't uh, passed the good old uh, Armstrong moment. First it was Elite Dangerous with a, a fade to black teleport onto the shore. And of course, uh, Ubisoft, uh, the, the Bethesda, right? With the loading screen disembarking as well. No animation, not even fucking animations. We're going back to black screen loading screens everywhere. Just like Starfield. <laughs> Oh, God! So remind me, Ubisoft, uh, how many studios worked on this quadruple A game uh, that is so big? Anyways, and speaking of the low effort failure category, the lack of sound effects and especially music is noticeable. Now, see, during my stream, a viewer remarked how drastically different the game feels. And then, boom, bombastic animation scene with music! 
Bottom line, yes, Sea Shanty singing is basically copied from CFTs, and that's a good thing. But the rest of the game is dead silent. So whatever the tone and feeling the artists were told to make, with no interesting music propping it up on top, this whole pirate theme adventure just evaporates and becomes bland and boring. Seriously, if you just want to experience how it would actually feel with proper music, put on CFTV's music while you're playing this garbage, and you'll see what I mean. You'll feel how much more immersive the game becomes. Oh, but no, music costs too much for Ubisoft, even though literally all the Ubisoft studios worked on the biggest, amazingest, super pooper duper Ubisoft original Ubisoft game. They could not afford a single music composer. Oh dear. So, remind me, what was the budget for this super indie game? What the fuck? And finally, we come to the main problem. Well, kinda. The price and the bullshit. It's a really full triple quadruple A game. The damn thing costs 60 euros or freedom papers. As I alluded before, the budget for the game was reportedly 120 million. They are asking a full $60 price for a game with barely any music and gameplay like this. Not quite enough, Captain! Then, to top it off, it's always online, meaning that, well, basically, fuck you, and it'll of course have microtransactions and season passes to rake out even more money out of you, while offering a, not even a casual pirate gameplay, but a dumbed down version. Seriously, you're better off picking up Ubisoft's last pirate game, the Ascreed Black Flag, for cheaper than this. Skull and Bones is not only inadequate, but downright abusive bullshit. And sure, we can all laugh. <laughs> we is very nasty, she's eating crunchies. <laughs> is what we do. But you know what? Fuck that. Even if we put aside Ubisoft's reputation, we still see the same shit repeat itself. All of it, the low quality, the crap gameplay, the exploitative nature of the product, all of it, once more, the shit that Ubisoft is known for these days, comes up again and again. Let's say I want to purchase it. This item costs you need extra. Go to store. 6,000 for 60 euros. That basically, hold on, if one, one piece of your garments cost 800. The, the braining, hold on. Uh, nine times up, uh, the, the, uh, eight, Jesus Christ, 72. So basically, you can barely purchase one set of clothes. So for $60, one fucking outfit. Excuse me, fucking Ubisoft. Are you kidding me? Fuck you, Ubisoft. F these are no longer fucking microtransactions. Welcome to Star Citizen level of bullshit. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, I'm fucking done with this. No, fuck this game genuinely and fuck Ubisoft and every single one of their studios who made this garbage. The lazy hack pieces of shit. I could understand partially if this was made free to play and it would actually have quality gameplay for this kind of fucking microtransactions. No, how about you go fuck yourself and make a good fucking game? No, that's it. I'm fucking done. Fuck you, Ubisoft. I'm done. Thank you, folks, for watching. That's it. Oh, it really didn't take long, but we got ourselves the first really stinky stinker of 2020, and it's Ubisoft once more leading the pack. Well, unless, of course, you're counting the suicide. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, that's the second one, then. <laughs> I don't know you a slip up your ass. But as for the game, Skull and Bones, can it recover maybe like Sea of Thieves? Uh, yeah, um, I don't want it to. No matter if it can, there is no charm, no heart in anything that Skull and Bones presents. It simply is propped up by empty hype marketing and cheap pirate costume, while attempting to literally swindle and extort as much money out of your gullible ass as possible. 
Personally speaking, this is one of those rare instances where I don't want it to get better. I don't want to give these companies a single idea that it's okay. It's okay to make games that will die if the server hamsters are killed in 10 years time. That it's okay to put in microtransactions in the premium game. That it's okay to release a bare bones <laughs> game. That it's okay to make this boring and lazy game and hide behind the excuse that it's, you know, for casual audiences, that it's okay to treat everyone so poorly. Oh, and you thought that I forgot about the fucking sexual abuse thing that happened in the Ubisoft behind closed doors, didn't ya? So, yeah, this is one of those rare cases where a game simply does not deserve any kind of redemption, because that's the best option we got. Now that is just sad. So, there you have it, a surprise episode even for me, but I simply had to make a thing out of it to push back on corporate nonsense and especially the quadruple A bullshit and of course that stupid get comfortable with not owning games claim that comes out of the septic orifices of Ubisoft. And, hey, maybe you agree with me, in which case, well, maybe go check out the other failures off, or maybe in which case you would like to toss a buck my way on Patreon or join YouTube members to support my efforts in, well, whatever this is, essentially. But no, seriously, I appreciate everyone supporting on Patreons and YouTube members and all that stuff. Uh, honestly, at this point, this failure of Skull and Bones kind of inspired me to maybe at some point try out Black Flag, even though not fun of Assassin's Creed, but regardless, at least that'll be a good game, probably, so people say, so should I? In any case, so yar, har, sweet little do and whatnot else, yar to me, mateys, and I'll see you next time.